Hey. Wanna buy some space ales? Oh, no thanks. I don't collect space ales. They're only available for the next 30 minutes. I'll take 12. Hey everyone, my name is Discourse and today I want to talk about your pile of shame. That's right, I know you've got one. I can see right through you. That Andromeda's box looked like a pretty good deal at the time, didn't it? But where is it at now, huh? Just a pile of sprues in a world of regret. Okay, so maybe there's some self-reflection that I need to do on this as well. Because I'm guilty of this too, and I think if you asked most hobbyists, they too would agree that they have a pile of shame as well. And if you're not familiar with the term pile of shame, well, I envy you. But it's called this because it's a backlog of accumulated miniatures that often take the form of huge stacks of unopened boxes and, and sprues that one day you'll, you'll get to them. Honest. One day. And there's a little bit of a bleed over as to when your normal backlog, you know, like the orcs that you're halfway through painting, as to when they become part of the pile of shame as opposed to simply being part of your normal collection. Now, some people will always include their unpainted miniatures in this pile, but I personally wouldn't. To me, the pile of shame is only added to whenever the models within no longer generate any joy and don't really exist to be played with and don't really form part of a complete collection that you're proud of right now. Really, for them to be shameful, they need to evoke a response of dread when you think of them and act like a lodestone around the hobbyist's neck. One day, I'll get it done. One day. But at the back of your mind, you're aware that that day will probably never come. And this is a pretty common experience. And not just for miniature wargame hobbyists. People have video game piles of shame, card game piles of shame, board game piles of shame. It's really prevalent. So why do we do this to ourselves? Why do we accumulate endless products? And the thing that inspired this video was a trend on the Warhammer 40k subreddit, where users were showing off pictures of unopened boxes and accumulated miniatures that were never going to get used. And this was drawn attention to by one Redditor who made some insightful points about why we shouldn't celebrate this consumer behavior. And you can see this post here. Oh, oh, it looks like it's been deleted. Hmm. Why would the 40K subreddit mods do that? They don't have a vested interest in people buying Warhammer 40K models that they'll never use, do they? Surely not, but hmm. How very curious. Curious? Well, that all aside, one of the things that resonated with me with this post was that hobbyists hold a perverse pride in their accumulated piles of shame. And to be fair, I think generally for most miniature wargamers, we enjoy the act of collecting. The Great Miniature Wargame Survey shows that the third most popular aspect of this hobby is collecting. This makes sense to me because I love it. Especially when I can get that sense of completion that comes from placing my finished, painted and based model down on the magna rack with all its kin. Ah. But that joy of collecting isn't as satisfying when it just results in boxes of miniatures sitting there in that little nook. Oh jeez, I have so much left to paint. And this is definitely a theme of these piles of shame. They hold a cherished place in our heart of hearts. As hobbyists, we're sort of proud of the accumulated boxes of plastic. But in this strange Hellraiser meets Slanesh relationship of pain and pleasure, like if Clive Barker wrote Das Kapital, it's terrifying yet sort of thrilling to look with dread upon your pile of shame. And in part, this is down to the ritual that goes into buying new pieces of plastic. Every time I buy a new box or miniature, I get this rush and a loop of positive feedback as I imagine the possibilities of the model. When I buy a miniature, I'm not thinking of the model as it is when I get it. I'm not thinking to myself, oh boy, kitty and infantry, their sprues are gonna look so good on my pile of shame. No, I'm considering their possibilities. I'm imagining how they'll improve the gameplay of my army. I'm thinking about how I'll paint up their color scheme and how I'll build them to look different from their kin. And in my head, this is all unlimited potential. I have all the time in the world to do this. And then they arrive and I think, awesome. And then I put them on my pile of shame because my backlog is so big, it's gonna be forever until I can get round to them. 
Straight into the monument of consumerism, thanks. I mean, these miniatures exist to be played with, to be built, to be painted. So buying them just to accumulate dust for months or years on end isn't exactly ideal. And if you have a huge backlog of miniatures, maybe it's time to take Guy's advice from Midwinter Minis and just, you know, stop buying new products for a while. But that's easier said than done, I know. Especially because there's plenty of companies in this space <laughs> that would prefer you not to work on your backlog if it means you're not going to keep buying new miniatures. We've seen a massive focus of FOMO marketing and FOMO release runs from companies like Games Workshop. And to be honest, while the hype cycle and fear of missing out has always to some extent been a component of their business model, it has in recent years become the linchpin. And we can see this evident in releases like for Curse City or the Indominus Box or Dominion. And we've seen this most recently in the free Sergeant Caster model, the Space Marine you get if you spend £150 or $250 in the Games Workshop online store for a limited time only. Oh, and by the way, it should be $201 at the current exchange rate. So what gives? Just wanted to make it harder for the Yanks, I guess. GW are never going to let them forget about that tea, are they? So FOMO is a style of marketing that pushes consumers to make an impulse purchase now, rather than regretting the action later. So whether a limited run lasts for two weeks or a weekend, it works to get consumers to buy in ASAP against their better judgment. Though obviously the shorter the release window, the worse it is for consumers. And the more likely we are to impulse buy. And yeah, this is a huge component of miniature wargaming marketing. Dana Hoyle draws attention to this in her Pile of Shame video, where she recognizes that the majority of her Pile of Shame consists of limited release box sets or discounted models on eBay that she just couldn't pass up. And Games Workshop are doubling down on this style of marketing again and again and again. And this exploits our psychology, because as a species, we're pretty risk averse. So you think that'd make us more cautious, right? Not when it comes to capitalism, baby. Because risk avoidance can mean preventing the possibility of regretting the opportunity to buy. You're afraid that you'll miss out on this one chance to buy in. And you see that mentioned in the marketing on Warhammer Community. The words last chance, limited time, exclusive, are all designed to get consumers oiled up and ready to spend. This is on purpose. When we're sitting in the online queue of the Warhammer store, an hour before the release of the next limited box set on a Saturday morning, we have to recognize that we've fallen for this tactic. And Games Workshop try to straddle the line on this a bit, because sometimes they re-release models that were originally part of a limited run. For example, the limited edition Sisters of Battle Army box set was originally released as a limited run. Consumers were made aware that this was the case and they were encouraged to buy in while stocks lasted. But later, down the line, those same Sisters of Battle models were made available in their combat patrol. So this is good, right? Well, sort of. Obviously, making models that people want to buy available for them to buy is a good thing. That is good for consumers. It's better to release them than not. But even if these models are later released down the line, as consumers, we don't know whether or not that's going to happen next time we're faced with a limited edition run. We can't know if Games Workshop will charitably decide to release those models later, and it can never be guaranteed that they will. We have to take their word for it when they say it's a limited release. So they're not exactly doing us a favor when they re-release models. They're doing what they should have done all along, except now they're benefiting at both sides of the equation. They're exploiting FOMO the first time that it releases, and then they're getting the profit from selling the models at a later date. They're maximizing the profit from their FOMO release, and then they're doubling down on the sales and profit from re-releasing those models. This shouldn't be celebrated. This is a deceptive business practice, because when they release limited run boxes, they should let us know whether or not these models will become available at a later stage. They should tell us whether or not these components will be sold separately and in what form. But they don't do that because they know that it will put less pressure on consumers to buy in during the FOMO hype. 
And then they finagle that business practice into good press and goodwill, as hobbyists celebrate the fact that they can now get models that should have always been available. And a really egregious part of this marketing that doesn't get talked about very often, but is really important in my opinion, is that while FOMO affects every hobbyist to some extent, Obviously, some hobbyists are far more resolute in their ability to not buy into new things than me, for example. But this hits the neurodivergent the hardest. There's studies that show people with ADHD, autism, bipolar disorder, addictive behavior, etc. are far more prone to feeling FOMO far more acutely. And often this comes with a compulsion to collect. So yeah, you can see how this might be a problem when the biggest company in our space routinely preys on these compulsions. And actually, a lot of so-called wheels, that is, people who spend a lot of money on miniatures and FOMO products, are actually disabled people who compulsively spend and struggle with addiction. Laura K. Buzz talks about this in her great video on microtransactions in video games, but her experience are definitely applicable to our own hobby. There is a link to that video in the description below. And look, even if you don't fall into this category right now, one day you might. As we get older, our mental health deteriorates and we gain conditions we might not have had before. And therefore, it's very important that as a community, we work together to safeguard our most vulnerable members. Personally, I don't think it's right that Games Workshop target the most vulnerable in their marketing. I don't think that's ethical and I don't think it should form part of what's acceptable in the hobby space. But besides that, experiencing FOMO isn't really good for anyone. It's known to result in a lower feeling of life satisfaction in general. And when a hobby should be all about providing purpose and joy in life, then it sucks that consumers have to deal with duplicitous sales technique that completely claws out the joy from within. And it's important that we raise this, because I do think the Games Workshop might be responding a little to the complaints of the community, but not half as much as they need to be. It shouldn't be too hard to just make and sell miniatures. So I don't think we should be glorifying piles of shame either. And actually, next time I see a picture of one, I think I'm going to reflect a little bit harder on my own and consider whether or not this is something I'm comfortable in supporting. And maybe I'll think about working on my backlog a little bit harder. And if any of this resonates with you, why not check out my Patreon at www.patreon.com slash discourse miniatures. You can see my fine patrons on the screen right now, and it's only thanks to them that this channel is able to continue the way that it does. And they get some behind the scenes goofing, as well as early access to the intros. Alternatively, you can check out the affiliates of the channel in the description. These are companies that I have bought from and I recommend, and I can attest to their reliability and good prices. When you buy from them through the link, this channel gets a percentage of the seal at no extra cost to you. So it's a really good way of helping support the channel without having to pay anything extra if you were already going to buy some miniatures, which, you know, you probably were. And do subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye I feel like they should be slapping down a sticker of please buy miniatures responsibly. By the way, I know, yes, other businesses exploit FOMO too. No, I don't agree with it in those marketplaces either. But you know, I talk about miniature wargaming, so I'm gonna focus on it in our hobby. But I agree, it shouldn't be acceptable anywhere.